What's going on gardeners? It's Sunday, October 23rd, and it is a gorgeous fall day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Today, I'm going to show you all how to turn a cheap trash can into a rapid composter to save you all kinds of time and money. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Compost is one of the best natural amendments that you can use in your garden, around your landscaping, and fruit trees, but it is very expensive, and that is for good reason. It is a lot of work to make, and it takes a long time to make. I've been messing around with your standard cold compost piles for a few years now, and I've never been successful at them. While I'm good at starting them, what happens is the seeds sprout, uh, weeds grow into them, the weeds generally wind up taking over the pile, and then they just wind up getting overtaken by pests laying eggs in the big weed mat I've now created for myself. So I'm trying to get rid of these nasty, cold, problematic uh, heaps of compost piles that don't work all too well, and I think I've created a much better system. I think this trash can compost method is going to be the answer to my problems. So I went to Lowe's and I bought the cheapest 32 gallon trash can I could find. Here's a really nice trash can at Lowe's for under $25. It's a 32 gallon trash can, and it also has a locking lid. That way critters can't get into it. So that's really beneficial for the cost. This trash can method of composting is going to fix all of the problems that I have with composting. Number one, because I'll be able to put the compost in here, I'm not going to have to have this big ugly pile in the middle of my yard. Instead, it's going to be in this innocuous trash can. Nobody is going to know there is compost brewing in here. I believe this is also going to speed up the composting process because this black trash can is going to heat up in the sun. And that increase in temperature, even all throughout the winter, is going to speed up the decomposition process, so I'm going to get compost a lot faster. Now, because this trash can is enclosed, I'm not going to have any of my weed-like centipede grass crawling into the compost pile, and because it will have a lid on top of it, it's also going to prevent weed seed germination because there's going to be no light accessing the compost. And because I bought one with a lockable lid, no pests are going to be able to get into my compost pile and eat things out of it. So what I've done is this. Over by my trash cans, I've dug up the little bit of lawn that was there and I've leveled the ground. And this is where I'm going to have to put my trash can, which will be my composter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sink this trash can into the dirt hole that I just dug out. And I'm going to use this two inch hole saw bit right here to cut holes inside the bottom of the trash can so I can let worms and other beneficial insects in the soil to help decompose the material that I put inside this trash can. However, I can't go crazy with the amount of holes that I place inside this trash can because if I place too many holes, it's going to ruin the structural integrity of the bottom so I won't be able to pick it up and dump it. The whole bottom will break. So I've strategically placed X's where I'm going to make the holes. So I have a total of seven holes and I made sure to leave the lid on the bottom. That way the lid will catch all of the holes I make in the top of this trash can. Now the holes have been cut into the bottom of this trash can so worms and other beneficial insects can get in through the bottom. Now we also have to drill holes in the side of the container in order to let oxygen into the system. That's because with the lid on we could create an anaerobic condition where there's a lack of oxygen and you'll get that nasty disgusting rot and decay instead of the beneficial aerobic decomposition that we want. So we have to drill some holes into the sides of the trash can. And to do that I started to mark out some locations. I know they're not in a perfectly straight line. This doesn't have to be perfect. I'm simply making a cheap $20 composter. So I'm going to start with a smaller pilot hole drill bit, and then I'm going to switch that over to this 7 eighths drill bit or something a little bit wider. So we let in a significant amount of oxygen so we don't get an anaerobic condition, but we don't want to make the holes so large that any pests can get in and that the matter that we put inside this composter doesn't leak out.
Now the trash can has been set into its final place and I backfilled around it with the native dirt that I dug out. So now it is officially a sunken trash can with air holes and bottom access holes. Now I'm going to fill up the trash can with key organic matter for composting. And I'm going to start off with grass clippings. I just got done mowing my lawn and I collected at least one five gallon bucket full of green grass clippings. And this is going to be the greens portion of my compost, which is the nitrogen nitrogen portion, which will help speed up the decomposition process. Then over here, I also made sure to go around my yard and I collected some leaves and some pine needles. This is going to be the brown portion of my compost, which is rich in carbon. And finally over here, I have kitchen scraps that I've been collecting all week. And in here, there are banana peels, eggshells, coffee grounds, uh, pieces of broccoli, and uh, did I say banana peels? Um, ends of carrots and celery, things like that. All kinds of good things, high in nutrients. So I will have my greens for nitrogen, my browns for carbon, and lots of nutrients in the kitchen scraps. So in go the grass clippings, the pine needles and the leaves. We're going to add in the sod that I dug out of the ground when I actually dug the hole in order to put this uh, trash can in its place. And finally, we're going to put in the kitchen scraps. And then we're going to take a shovel and we're going to mix that all around in order to evenly distribute and kind of chop up the organic matter that's in the bottom of this trash can right now. And one thing you will notice is that everything is very dusty. That's because we've only had half an inch of rain in the past month, so we need to wet this down. It's very important that we keep some moisture in our compost because that will help add, uh, that will help aid in the decay of the matter overall. And we're also going to wet down the dirt around the base of the trash can as well because we want to try and attract those earthworms and other beneficials into the trash can and they will be naturally more likely to come around damp, moist soil. So now the last thing we're going to do is place on the lid and we want to lock it so nothing gets in and takes any of the kitchen scraps. So now we're simply going to monitor the trash can composter for regular updates over the next few weeks or months. It's Saturday, November 5th, and I have been accumulating kitchen scraps inside of this composter for a while now, ever since I began the construction project. And it's very important to accumulate these kitchen scraps because these are going to be the nutrients in the compost. The grass clippings and the leaves, they're not enough. We really want to add a ton of vitamins and minerals to our compost, so that's why we have all of these kitchen scraps in there. So I have banana peels, eggshells, leek tops, uh, cuttings from things like kale and broccoli, uh, coffee grounds, all kinds of good stuff in here. So now that I've had them all layered and accumulated, I'm going to stick my hand in and I'm going to mix everything together. You can actually already see some soil life crawling around in here. I have some, some bugs that are uh, in here crawling all over the place and they're going to be key in assisting the decomposition process. So I don't know if we have any earthworms in there yet, but it appears that some critters are finding the composting trash can and that is great news. So we're going to put the lid back on and we're just going to wait a few weeks and see how much decomposition we can get because let me tell you the bottom stuff, all that grass in the bottom, it's already starting to show signs of decomposition. Well, it's Monday, December 26th, and the organic matter has been going in this composter since I last filmed, and I haven't really checked on it since. I haven't done anything to it. I haven't added any more plant matter to it. So what we see right here is the full, unadulterated results of the plant matter naturally decomposing over this time. So before I pull the lid off, I just want to make it clear, it has been extremely cold here. We just got an absolutely massive, historic Arctic outbreak that swept across the country. You probably were part of it and knew how bad it was. You have to figure that the temperatures inside this trash can right now is it's the lowest it's going to be all season long. So we were getting basically minimum activity from the natural soil bacteria and other microbes. So what we see in here should basically be the worst case scenario because if we composted at any other time of the year, we would have more temperature and therefore a faster decomposition rate. So let's pull off this lid and take a look. Wow, and here are the results of the plant matter that you see. I'm actually really impressed right now at how fast the decomposition rate is. I mean, I don't really recognize anything in here aside from uh, some eggshells right here. Now, that's actually nice and moist under here. 
I was kind of hoping we'd be able to see some insects roaming around in there, but unfortunately it may just be too cold or they just might not be active right now because it's only 43 degrees Fahrenheit out. But wow, look at this. This is what we're going for right here. That is that wonderful black gold that we all want to see so badly. And this feels, this is well on its way uh, to being some, some fantastic humus, some fantastic finished compost one day. It's still a little early. It's going to take more time, obviously, but I'm actually blown away by now. I can't believe how quickly all of that stuff broke down in only a matter of basically several weeks when you consider how long a cold compost pile can take and the fact that we're in the coldest part of the year with the least amount of daylight and we still got these great results. So that is the finished product right there. Well, it's not finished, but it's as far as it's gotten right now. And that is incredible results, in my opinion, in such a short period of time for this time of year. This looks gorgeous. So now that I have definitive proof that this composter works great, I can finally add in all of these kitchen scraps that I've been saving for weeks. I have eggshells, banana peels, coffee grounds, and all types of vegetable cut ends that I've been storing because I didn't want to add them in and ruin the integrity of this experiment. I wanted to see just how far we could get in this limited amount of time. But now that I know this works great, we can dump all of these things in and dig our hands in and mix them around. I have to say, I'm incredibly impressed right now because this is a whole lot faster than using a cold compost pile, and it's incredibly cheap when comparing it to one of those expensive and surprisingly small compost turners. So really happy with this. This is probably the best inexpensive rapid composter that you can actually make at home. This cost me less than $25, so I'm just thrilled. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to relocate this trash can right here, and I'm going to buy a second trash can of equal size, and I'm going to place it right next to this one. And what I'm going to do is, when I have two of them, I'm going to fill up the one and allow it to compost undisturbed for several months to make my compost, and then I'll start adding to the second spare one with all of my kitchen scraps and coffee grounds and and things like grass clippings and uh, maybe chopped up leaves and pine needles that I need to add when I need to add browns to all the greens I'm adding in from the kitchen. So long story short, I'll have a really big trash can that I'll be able to periodically fill up while the other one sits undisturbed and will compost for me. And then when that one is ready for me to use around the yard and garden, I take all of the homemade compost out of that. This one, the second one, will be finished and full and ready to sit undisturbed for several months until it fully breaks down. And that's going to be the system that I use. And personally, I think it doesn't really get much easier and cheaper than that. And that right there just may be the easiest and cheapest DIY rapid composting system that you can easily set up in your backyard garden. And now I have proof that it works and I couldn't be happier. So everybody, I sure hope you consider to give this a try because you can make it for a very little amount of money and build it in no time flat. So if you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to that channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden in general. They are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront link in the video description. So expand the video description, click on the Amazon link to see everything I use in real life with descriptions organized into lists. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Bad news, Dale. We ran out of your good, fresh, homemade food yesterday, so now all we have is boring old dry food with some vitamins. I'm sorry about that, buddy. Now, just wait. I want to show everybody how good and patient you are because you're so hungry. Okay. Oh, he's such a good listener. He's so polite, even though my boy is starving.